So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about thirds. And just to refresh your memory about thirds, if we can't simplify a number to remove a square root or a cube root or any kind of root really, then it's a third. So for instance, the square root of two is a third. So the square root of two, that is a third because I can't simplify this any further. However, the square root of four, that's not a third because I know that this is the same as the square root of two squared or just two because two times two is four. So the square root of four is not a third, so that's not a third. Okay, so there are some general rules which you should be aware of, and I've written them down here. So there's two rules in general that you should be aware of. So the first one says that the nth root of x to the m is equal to x to the m over n. So for instance, the cube root of seven squared is seven to the two over three. The next rule is perhaps the most important one, which says that the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of a, b. So in other words, if you've got uh, a radical of a number times a radical of another number, as long as the radicals are the same, so if you've got the square roots, or they're both cube roots, then you can collect them under the same radical. So for instance, if I've got the square root of two times the square root of three, I can put those together to make the square root of six. Or in other words, if I had the if I had three here's for instance, I, I could have the cube root of a times the cube root of b is equal to the cube root of a b. So the cube root of two times the cube root of three equals the cube root of six. It doesn't matter what nth root it is, as long as the nth roots are the same. In that case, I can collect them together. So let's look at that. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at the square root of eighteen. Well, I know that two times nine is 18. So this is the same as the square root. That's the same as the square root of two times nine. Using the rule above, I can split this uh, square root into two pieces to become the square root of two times the square root of nine. And I know that three times three is nine, or three squared is nine. So I can write this as the square root of two times three, or equivalently three root two. That's the first example. Let's look at the next one. The next one asks us to simplify the square root of 60. Well, I know again that the square root of 60 is the square root of four times 15, because four times 15 is 60. This is the same as the square root of four times the square root of 15. And the square root of four is just two. So this is just two root 15. And you might ask, why is it that I stop here? Well, I know that 15 is three times five. So I could again write this as two uh, times root three times root five. But after that, I can't actually simplify root three and root five. So I'm just gonna leave it in this form. That brings us quite nicely to our next problem. We're asked to simplify the square root of 17. Well, I noticed that the only numbers that divide 17 or in other words, the only factors of 17 are one and itself. So in other words, that's by definition a prime number. So since 17 is a prime number, I can't simplify it any further. I mean, if you try to do something like this, like this, oh no, the square root of one times 17, you just end up with one root 17, which is root 17. So you can't simplify this number any further. It's in fact already a third. So the root 17 is already in its simplest form. So that's that example. Let's look at the square root of a thousand. Well, I know that 10 times 100 is a thousand. So this is the same as 10, or the square root of 10 times, uh, square root of 10 times 100. I know that 100 is 10 squared. 10 times 10 is 100. So this is the same as the square root of 10 times the square root of 100, which is 10 root 10. And again, I could try to write this as root two times root five, but I don't want to do that. I'll leave it as 10 root 10. That brings us to our last example. Let's try to find the cube root of 128. Well, I know that if I divide 128 by eight, I'll get 16. I know that eight times 16 is 128. So this is the same as the cube root. Remember, we're dealing with cube roots here. This is the same as the cube root of 8 times 16. Equivalently, that's the same as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 16. Well, I know that the cube root of 8 is 2, because I know that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, 
or in other words, it's two cubed. So this is the cube root of two cubed times the cube root of 16. I know that cube root of anything cubed is just that number again, because we're doing basically, we're cubing something, then we're taking the cube root. So we're undoing what we've just done. So this is the same as two times the cube root of 16. So now notice that I can split up 16 even further. I know that 16 is 2 times 8, so what happens if we do that? So this is the same as 2 times the cube root times the cube root of 8 times 2, which is the same as 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 8. And again, the cube root of 8 is just 2, because we've just shown that above. So this is 2 times the cube root of 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So if you collect those together, that just becomes 4 times the cube root of 2.